Uh, here I am. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> um, uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to ITS 140. Um, today we will just continue with um, our race. <clears throat> Remember lists Python. Uh, before I get started, are there Bless you. Are there any questions? All right, it doesn't seem like there's any questions. So as I said, um, today, if you remember, I know you've had a long break. Hopefully you enjoyed your rest um, since last Thursday. But if you remember last week, uh, we were going over the topic of arrays, and I went over the general arrays on Tuesday, then went over the Python version lists and tuples on Thursday, but I didn't assign a homework, right? So that's what you're going to get today. You're going to get a homework assignment um, on this topic. And then, so you didn't have a homework assignment due today either. <coughs> so we've covered quite a bit so far, right? As I said, arrays is a topic that probably needs a little bit more uh, emphasis. So I'm going to just do examples today, kind of the same thing I always do. Um, I wanted to remind you that, um, you know, some observations about the homework, please always, uh, you can submit all the files that you want or just a report, but you must always include a report, okay? Um, so that I certainly I want to ask, remind you, don't break it up into four reports, just one. Um, also, the other thing, most of you are doing a great job. I noticed some of you are still not doing the flow charts correctly. You know, in the, in the beginning, I was, you know, not taking away that many points just because you were getting used to it. But if, if, you, if you sort of continue doing that, I'm going to start to use grading, you know, to make sure that you pay attention, right? So make sure you are following all the symbols um, that you add, the arrows and everything, okay? Um, it's not so much your logic in the flowcharts that I'm grading, but it is you're just trying to implement the flowchart. Okay, so do at least you know some effort there. All right, uh, so that's it. Your exams are posted. Your grades are posted. All right, and so now we're going to continue with uh, with our discussion of arrays. Um, Today, as I said, you know, I've, I've done pretty much two lectures on them, so I'm not going to lecture today. And instead, I just I'm just going to pick a few uh, a few problems to do, maybe some some interesting ones. Okay, and then I will be posting the PDF today, later today probably, and I'm going to have you work through. You know, I'm going to assign as you might imagine, a few problems. All right, so I'm trying to decide on which one looks interesting here. So let's, you know, so I'm gonna, I'm going to be going over the, if you have the old book, it's chapter eight, and I'm going to look for, in programming exercises, I'm going to pick one so might as well start with the first one, I think. Mm. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's just start with an easy one because we have to do everything for it. All right, so, um, so this, is, this will be problem 8-1. This is problem eight one. All right. Um, so total is called total sales. Oops. 
total sales. All right, so the, the problem says, design a program that asks the user to enter a store sales for each day of the week. The amount should be stored in an array. Use a for loop, or you sorry, use a loop to calculate the total sales of the week and display the results. Okay, so that seems easy enough. All right, so we're gonna start looking at it. So we're going to do the pseudocode first. And then we're going to do the flow chart and then we're going to do the, the Python code for this problem. All right, so let's, let's think about it. Uh, we need a function or a module for show total for the week. We need another module probably for get sales. And then we need, yeah, so, and then the main module. So let's start with the main module. So I'm just gonna say, remember this is the pseudo code, this general code, module main. And then we need to create an array to hold the sales for six days, right? Six, six days of the week, let's say. So then uh, we're gonna create a constant integer size <coughs> All right, so I'm going gonna, gonna to mute your microphones there. Okay, so constant integer size equals six. All right, and then um, I'm, you know, declare the array. So I'm going to do declare real sales, and then we're going to define it to be size. Okay. Then we're going to define the two functions that we want. Uh, so we're going to do the first we need to get the sales. So we're going to say call get sales. All right, and this will be some kind of a function. Um, but for now, we're just going to, we would pass the array um, sort of, I guess. And then size, we can pass that as well. <coughs> Then over here, we're going to do call show, oops, show total. All right, and then sales and size. Okay, and then end module. All right, so that's that's where we are, you know, we create the first main module. Now we need to define these individual modules. So we're going to start with get sales. Uh, so we're going to do module, module, get sales, and then real. Right. Um, in this case, because we're getting the sales back, if you think about, you know, by by val by ref, we would sort of have a link to the array back. So we would do ref. Although remember, you don't have to do that in Python. And here you'll do sales. Right. That's the same um, same array. And then you also specify integer for the size. Okay. 
which is you know that parameter over here. All right, now that we have that, you're going to declare declare integer index. Integer index. Okay, and then now we need to think about the logic that we want to do. So, you know, we've talked about this quite a bit last week. You know, we need to basically enter a for loop and input the data, right? So we're going to say for index, which is what we just defined over here, for index, we'll say equals zero to size minus one, because every, because it'll start at zero, so remember that. Then we're going to do um, display, you know, message, you know, enter value, something like that. So enter value. Um, and then we can say input. And now we're just going to input directly into the array. So we're going to input into sales. And we're going to specify that it's going to be the current index. Remember, we're going to be in the current index for iteration of the for loop here, right? And then after that, we're going to do n4. And then we're going to do end modules. OK. And that's it. That's basically the, the second function, <coughs> get sales. So now we're going to look at the next one, which is call show total. Right? And that one should be pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead to a new page. And now we're going to define module show total, and then we're going to say it takes in as parameters, it takes sales and size. So we need to say real sales. Notice here there is no by ref because we're not really um, passing anything back. So real sales, it's an array. So we can use the square brackets to indicate that. Then we have integer size, okay, integer size. And now we have um, same thing. We need to declare an index here, declare, declare integer index. Okay, the, or the loop counter. Now we need to calculate a total. So we're going to declare real total, right? In Python, this would have been, would be like this, 0, 0.0. This is, you know, if you remember, we sometimes call this the accumulator. Accumulator. Then we have, uh, and now the for loop, right? So we have the for loop for index equals zero. to size minus one. All right, so that, you know, that's our for loop there. Uh, and now we just, you know, easily, the accumulator is gonna be total, equal total, 
uh, plus sales index. Okay, sales index. And then N4. So that's basically the, the approach that we could take. All right, and that, you know, that you should by now be familiar with that one. Uh, and then finally, we just display the results. So we can say display. You know, the total is. <coughs> and then we can say total. And that's it. That takes us to the end of the module. End of the module. All right. So that's basically our pseudocode for this problem. Are there any questions? No questions? All right, so now let's go ahead and implement the flow charts for these. Go ahead over here. And I'm going to do, so I'm going to start with the main. So I'm going to say main, All right, main. Then you have um, constant integer. Size equals six, right? Can also declare integer. Integer. This one's important, right? Because it's is the array itself. So you probably want to make sure you do this one. Size. Okay, and then you're going to make the calls to the two functions. So you're going to say call get sales, which takes sales and size. And remember, because it's a function call, it looks like this. All right, then uh, we have the other one, which is uh, call show total. And that one takes sales and size as well. And it's also a function call like that. All right, and then once you do that, you know, that's the end of the program. So you can end it there. And that's it. So that's the main. And then now we just need to define the two function calls or module calls in in another part of the flow chart. Are there any questions about this flow chart? No questions. All right, so then let's move to the next page. And now we're going to do get sales. We're going to do get sales real ref and then maybe over here just say sales comma integer size. All right, so that's the name of the function basically the name of the module so from here we can then proceed to 
to define, um, we needed basically the index. You remember it was just a for loop. So declare integer index, simple process. Then we have another process, which is going to be set index equals zero. Okay. And then now I'm just going to say kind of A here and A over here. And now we can define the for loop. So really remember with these for loops, it's kind of tricky. We have to create the diamond shape. And you're going to say if index less than or equal to size minus one, right? So you have these two branches. So if it's false or if it's true. Oops. <laughs> so if it's false, then you do return. Right. And now if it's true, you're going to basically do, you know, the two steps. So first, you know, you're going to do that display. Enter the sales for day. Pound sign, right? Or for just for day, let's say. Okay. And that's going to be the symbol here, parallelogram. And then finally, we just input the value, the actual value. input sales index. Okay. And then remember it's, you know, you're in the loop, so you kind of have to, let me kind of erase this. <clears throat> so you're going to Go there and then this one. Okay. And that's basically the the flow chart for get sales. Are there any questions? Right, so I think at this point, you know, these flow charts should be very, I think, in, I think you understand them. I think you, I, I've noticed in your homework assignment, what's going on is that you're just maybe, you find it a lot of work or you just don't know how to do it in Word very well or, or something like that. But you gotta do the effort because you gotta do it. It's part of the, you know, it's, maybe you, you don't even think it's necessary for you anymore. That makes sense. I mean, you're, you're not going to always use them, but, you know, I might say unfortunately for you, but, you know, uh, in this course, you kind of have to do them. And so I'm going to, as I said, I need to see them better for, you know, not all of you, all, a lot of you are doing a great job, but some of you I've noticed, not just like two or three, but, you know, some of you, a third of you are not doing these correctly. Okay, so make sure you, 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 and it's basically, as I said, it's not that you don't get them. It's just, you're not putting arrows. You're not, you know, so not putting this, not doing the symbols. Well. So make sure you do them like this. You know, if you want to do them by hand and take a picture of that, that's okay. I, some, so maybe I should have said that before. Some students have done that 
they just draw them out by hand and then take pictures and put the pictures in their one report. And, I, you know, that's fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. Just be aware that at some point you might have to use computers to do things like that. And it would be good practice to do it. All right. So now that we've done that one, let's look at the next one, which is the show total flow chart, which is going to be very similar, really. We're going to do show total real sales. And then we're going <coughs> to, excuse me, integer size. Okay. So that's, you know, the name of it. Then after that, we do declare integer index. Declare real total equals zero. Okay, so these are just processes. And then we're going to do set index Okay. And then from here, again, I'm going to do that. I'm going to use B this time. B. And so now, um, again, the diamond shape. All right, and we're going to say the same thing, really. Index less than or equal to size minus one. Okay, and then, you know, again, the same thing, false, true. All right, so it's false, you know, you just display uh, the total and that's because if you go back to the pseudocode, outside of the loop, we had this display. And that's what we're doing here. It's the for loop outside. So we're going to say display the display the total. is the total is comma and then the variable is total right and that's you know looks like that all right and then that basically at that point you end the function you return you know to the code true means that you just increment so you're going to set total equal to total, oops, total plus sales index. Okay, so you do that like that. And then basically you loop back and that's where it all right, so that you know that should be the um, the example for eight point one. Uh, so we've done the pseudocode, we've done the flow charts so far. Are there any questions? No questions. All right, so if there's no questions, then now we should be ready to do the, the Jupyter Notebook.
for this. <laughs> so I'm going to share. All right, so you should be now seeing the, um, the Jupyter Notebook. So again, and, you know, same problem, pretty straightforward. Um, we're just gonna do two functions. One gets the data. We're gonna, obviously, again, we're gonna get the data in a list and then return the list yeah, okay, so <clears throat> let's get started then. I'm just gonna, I know I need two functions. I'm gonna say define get sales. Like I said, I'm, I'm just gonna go um, kind of build out the skeleton for this first. So get sales, we're gonna say, um, I need an array for this or a list. I'm gonna say sales list, sales list. I'm going to initialize it to nothing, okay? And I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. Okay, then I'm gonna do Define uh, show total, show total and here um, we need to take the sales and add them up so we need some kind of a total initialize it to zero point zero. All right. Then after that, we're going to just make a call to these. So I'm not even going to create a main. I'm just going to say get sales. It's not necessary. And then get and but get sales will need to return sales array let's say i usually i i just like naming everything differently it you know because of the different scopes because that sales list is in a function and this would be outside they would be different but just for sanity i always like to um, for my own comfort level that i guess that's the way to, good way to put it i just feel more comfortable doing this and so i do it um and so I've got sales array, get sales, and then now I need to do show total. And that takes in sales underscore array. And that's it, right? That's pretty, pretty much it. So then now we just need to get the data here. Oops. So I'm gonna say, for i in range, and you need to specify the size. So here the size was just a sort of a constant. So then, you know, to simplify things, I can just say size equal, I think it was six. All right, so then for i in range, size, right, colon. And so now I got my indentation there, four spaces. Some people do two. I like four. Notice that Jupyter Notebooks by default do four, which is great. So now um, what do I need to do? I need to get, get the sales. So that means I, I should probably print out 
a message. So I'm going to say print enter sales for today. And then I'm going to say sales list index I. Now here's where I'm going to introduce something else, actually. I would usually not do it this way. I know that's how the, the pseudocode is. But the more Pythonic way, I guess, of doing this, of adding elements to a list would be to append. Okay, so this is a good place to introduce that. And <coughs> so what you're gonna do is, you know, usually you could do both in one line and that's actually more of the Python way. But just to be very clear, you know, I'm gonna say value and then I'm gonna say int. Literally, you could have done all those three things in one line, right? You could have done that. We'll show you in a second. Um, but, you know, for this class, I like to keep things simple. But, you know, you could have done this. You could have done sales dot, oh, sorry, not that, underscore list append. And then what do you append? You append input, right? And then what's an input? The prompt. Oops. Enter sales for today. Now, as you start doing a lot, you know, <clears throat> as you start doing more Python, you're going to see that this is this is how people do it. Uh, people even do for loops in one line, and that's called a list comprehension, which we will get to at some point later in the semester. And we still have a lot to cover files, object oriented programming, you know, sorting, uh, you know, more advanced lists, I guess, dictionaries. So there's quite a bit still ahead. Um, but so just be aware of that. Um, and so that, that would be, I guess, one way of doing it. And in fact, Given that this is a number, what else are we missing here? You guys remember the usual error we get? Typecasting, right? So float. And then notice here, though, you need to make sure you got that parentheses. In there. And so notice you have a lot packed into just one line. Hey, whereas here, I, I kind of, this would be three, at least three lines of, of code because here I would have to do float, right? But um, either way, whatever you prefer, if, you, if, you, if, if for some reason this seems to be clear to you, you know, go ahead and start doing that. Otherwise, if you feel like you wanna like, you know, sort of spell out things a little bit more, kind of write out things, it's fine. I like to do this for parentheses. Um, you know, I, I really like that. Another trick people do is they do things like, like this. And I feel this comes from like jQuery and, you know, web development, but it's certainly something that, you know, you'll have to develop a mechanism for this, for sure. Uh, but that's, that's called, you know, like your style, right? That's going to be, you know, you, believe it or not, even in programming, oops, went too far. Even in programming, you're going to have your own programming style and you're going to develop that. I think I'm missing a few pieces here. All right. Um, let's see, I have one, two, three. Anyway, are there any questions about what I just said, guys? Any questions? No questions, okay. All right, so now that I have, what am I missing here? 
What am I missing? I need to return, right? So when I finish the for loop, I need to return uh, sales list. Okay. Now that I've returned sales list, I have it in sales array, and then now I'm going to call show total. And show total was pretty much. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. No, wait. No, that's correct. All right. So I have the list. Now I got to iterate through the list and get the total. So I'm going to do here. Notice here sales array. Like I said, it doesn't matter. They're in different scopes. You could name it differently. Certainly you could. So now I'm going to do four. I notice this I is also different from this I because you know this I is within this function, this I is within this function, so that's fine. So for I in range, and then now um, for I in range. And it was six, right? The value was six, but we don't actually have to calculate six you know, or have six as a concept, we can calculate it, right? And I would say that's the preferred way. We can just do length of sales, right? And then now you plug that size in there and that should do it. Now you need to calculate the total. So we're just gonna say total equal total plus sales array. What? And here we can use that so that we can iterate through the values uh, and get what we are looking for. All right, and then once we have the, we, it, we calculated the total, we just needed to print the results of print total is, and then we can say, and usually at this point, we probably need to check that we don't have any, any, um, data type errors. So let's just give it a quick look. I think I don't have any errors. All right, so, but you know, the interpreter will sure, sure tell us. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, enter sales for today. So it should be six days. And I'm just gonna say five, so it's gonna be $30, five times six, five times four, five, one more. Ah, error, okay, let's see. Name sales array is not defined, sales array. Ah, I capitalized it here. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, so hopefully this will work now. So I'm just going to run. All right, I'm going to use, you know, five again. Four. One more. Ah, there we go. Total is $30. And that's it. That completes problem 8.1. Are there any questions?
Any questions? All right, so let's do this. Let's take about, I don't know, uh, 20 minutes or so. And I'm gonna have you guys work on problem four, which is the number analysis program. Okay, so work on problem four. And you know, just so that you don't, you're not like listening to me. Instead, I'm gonna ask you to work on it. And then, you know, in about, you know, uh, 15 minutes or so, I will go over it with you guys. And that way, if you have any questions or anything, maybe it'll, you'll ask the question. So I want you to work on problem four, which basically says, you know, and I'll write it here on the whiteboard if you don't have a uh, short enough. Not a quiz per se, but. I just want you to kind of work through it <clears throat> and then we will solve it, okay? Just uh, do everything. The pseudocode flowchart and the Python code. Let's do that. All right, so problem four of arrays. This would be page, for those of you that do have the book, this would be page uh, 335. All right, so four, it's called a number analysis program. Okay, so basically design a program. So design a program that, or actually, let, let me see if I have this in the, save me time. I just don't remember if I've posted this already. I have arrays here. Oh, I do. Oh, I already posted this. Okay, great. So then all I have to do is share. Yeah, I'm going to share the screen here. All right, you should be seeing the PDF now. So I'm asking you to go over. this problem, problem number four, number analysis. You can read through it, okay? Start working on it. I'll give you about 15 minutes, so around 105, I'll start uh, solving it, all right? But that way, you at least work through some of it. Are there any questions? All right, guys, so you've had a few minutes to work on this problem, okay? Um, are there any questions? Did anyone solve it? I'm still working on it. Um, I said, but... I'm still working on the flow chart. Okay. Quick question as well. Um, 
for uh for the code um are we allowed to use um the built-in sort function the what the, built are we allowed built the built-in sort, fun sort uh, function i would say not at this time we will get to some of those functions at some point okay then the do it by hand especially because these are so easy problems such easy problems just try to do them by hand if you can okay just you know just to practice all right, so you guys have been working on it. You, you know, really what I wanted you to do is just think about it, right? So think about it, get it in your head. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the problem. This is 8.4. And then that should give us, um, you know, you know, get us, get us uh, some more practice with these. All right, so I may just leave the flow chart to you guys to do as, as part of the homework. So then this would be one of your homework problems. You've already started doing your homework then. Uh, but I will get you going with the pseudocode and the Python code. Right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna switch over to the uh, whiteboard. And I'm gonna start a new so that way you already know that you have one problem, problem four to finish. All right, so let me, 8.4, let's say this is part of your homework assignment. All right, um, so the problem, so maybe we should read through it again. <coughs> it's that number analysis program. Design a program that asks the user to enter a series of 20 numbers. The program should store the numbers in an array, okay, very similar to the other one, and then display the following data. So really the trick is to calculate these low, the lowest number in the array, the highest number in the array, the total of the numbers in the array, and the average of the numbers in the array. So that's not too bad. So let's go ahead and think about it. Um, we really just need, you know, let's say, let's, let's start with module main. Start there. Okay. So we, we know 20 is a number constant integer size again. Notice that usually parameters like this get capitalized and that's a standard approach in Python. Again, it's not required. It's just part of style, part of the style. All right, so then we're gonna say equal 20 and then you're gonna do declare integer numbers size right and then we're also going to do declare since these are all integers i'm going to have high low Total. Now, average, if I have three, seven, and one, 11 divided by three. Yeah, so I'm going to make that one a float just in case. Notice that you can just initialize them like this. This is perfectly acceptable in Python. And then I'm going to just say declare. Where float average 0 0.0. All right, so uh, we need to get the numbers. So I'm going to do four index from zero to size minus one. 
And then you're going to say display enter value. All right. And then I'm going to do input. Oops. input <coughs> um, so numbers which I created already so I'm saying input numbers and this okay so now I'm gonna do n4 and just dot 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 it's gonna continue in the next page so this is where really the, the hard part comes in, right? So we have now the values in the array, and then we need to calculate all these parameters, the lowest, the highest, and so on. So let's call that, let's add a comment. Let's just say get, these are usually referred to as statistics, you know, basic statistics. So statistics, there we go. And then we do for index equals zero to size equal minus one. And the one the easiest one is the total, right? So we just do set total. That one's just like the previous problem. Total plus numbers index all right so that's really um that's really it all right and then we have oops Now comes the hard part, if index equals zero, if index equals zero, you know, what do we do? We know we have, at the beginning, uh, we have high and low, Average, we can calculate at the end, so that's not a problem. So it's really just high and low. High and low are currently zero, and that may not be the correct thing to do. What do you guys think? What, what should I do? I wanna, I wanna grab the highest and the lowest at every iteration, right? So you guys tell me, what do you think? Any suggestions? Can we do a greater than and less than? Of what? Of the index. I had index for the other list. Yeah, not the index, but the value for yeah. being that index in the list, right? That's what you meant. Okay, let's do that. All right, so the first thing is, you know, let's do, so let, we'll come back to this. We need to initialize those values and that's actually, let's think about what you said. So I'm gonna do if, and I'm just gonna pick one, let's say high, right? And you say greater than or less than. So I'm just gonna say greater than for now. And then numbers, index right that's i'm current oops i'm currently at that position okay you know then so what do i do and if so that's really the question so i want the highest currently uh high is zero high is zero 
So basically, I'm just going to say if numbers index is less than, is greater than, actually. So I need to flip it, right? So I need to flip it. If numbers index is greater than high, which is currently zero, then what do you do? Set high to new value. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now let's look at the other end. And we're going to say if low, and that and that that'll work. Every iteration, we just compare the new value in the array corresponding to the, the current index. If it's greater than what's in high, we replace it with that one. So now low should be very similar. Let's just say take the symbol if low, you know, whatever, and then numbers index then right and then we do end if over here okay so the question again is uh if low low is zero numbers could be three seven so you always want the lowest but currently low is zero um and that's probably not going to work, right? So maybe in this if statement, we say that we set, we set uh, low to the current numbers index initially just we only do this once notice we only do it when it's zero so that we initialize it to some value so maybe that value was going to be let's say that in the first iteration that value is actually seven okay and then we come back here and we say is seven less than seven well they're the same so we don't do anything next iteration low is still seven but now we're in the next index of the array you know let's say we're in one and now it's 17. oh that actually doesn't work something lower so four there we go four so is low if low we want the lowest right so then we need to flip this if low which is seven is greater than four, that's true. So then set low to the current value. Does that make sense, guys? Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, and that's it. You know, that, that kind of solves everything. Then after that, the only thing we need to do is the average. And that's pretty easy because we have the total. We will have the total and we have the size, which is 20. And that's it. So given that you're going to do this problem, I'm only, I've done this part, but I'll let you guys finish up the pseudocode and the flow chart. So I'll let you guys do that, but I will do the Python code. Okay, so let me do the Python code over here. So we have a fully functional program, but I will, as I said, I will let you guys do the rest. Let's go ahead. Let me uh, bring up another Jupiter here. Okay. Let me share the screen. Let me share. Hmm. New Jupiter notebook. So you should be looking at <clears throat> a new notebook. All right. So Again, what do we need to do? We need, first of all, we need to get the data. All right, so I need to get the data. This one's so easy that I don't even think it needs a function. So I'm just going to do for uh, I range. You know, now it's going to be 20. There you go. So 
now I need to do, I need to collect the data. So usually here, remember, you're going to append. Now I need a list. I'm going to say list of numbers. Kind of like spelling out everything. Okay, and then I'm going to say list of numbers dot append. Right, and of course I need to get the values and everything. So I'm going to say um, print uh, enter enter value. Enter value. All right, and these are going to be, let's just say they could be floats. So I'm going to say then value equal cast, not cast, I'm thinking in another language, float. All right, and then I'm going to say uh, input, All right? Input, and there you go. Okay, now I'm going to append this. All right. Now I have that, and the next step will be to do, since I, I already have the values in the list, now I can proceed and calculate. So I, I'm going to say for i, notice I can use the same i in range, it'll just restart. Still 20. <coughs> And now, you know, the easiest one is total. So I'm going to need a, I'm going to need some variables here for sure. So I, need I have a question. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So would it be 21 or 20? Because don't account, don't account zero. No, that's a good question. Um, so the way that range works is that it provide when you say range 20, it provides 20 values starting, starting at zero. So it'll actually go zero to 19. And it's really 20 values, but the index would be zero, one. If you, if you kind of count those, it'll be 20 values. So definitely not 21, um, but 20. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, they always start at zero. And it, what I would say, always with this kind of thing if you're not sure if you're not sure for whatever reason do that okay it's always you know you know i call these sanity checks right just just do it you think it's right but you know do it make convince yourself of it right and then that's always the best the best thing to do All right, so um, let's keep going. So I did this, I was creating the variables, right? So I need low, I'm just gonna make all these float high. Okay, and I'm gonna do then, so now, <clears throat> You know, what we did, easiest one is total. List of numbers, right? 
And then here we can just plug in the index. And then we can do the logic for low and high. <coughs> so if index equal zero, first iteration, we set we we said we would do uh, low, right? So we set low. Was it low or high? I don't remember. It was low. It was low. Yeah. So we set low to numbers index. So I'm going to say low here. I'm going to assign to it list of numbers. Now it's not index, right? That was in the pseudocode. Here it has to be i. So it's going to be i like that. And that should be it. I was already initialized to zero, so that's that should be okay. All right, so now that we've done that, we can then go into the specifics. So we're going to say if high, we agreed it was less than list of numbers. I then we're going to just replace set that value. So we're going to set high to be list of numbers. Okay. Now on the other end, if low greater than list of numbers, list of numbers, I, colon, then the same thing. We set low to list of numbers. And that should be it. So that's pretty straightforward. The last thing we would have to calculate is the average. So we haven't created that variable, doesn't matter. We can create it here. Average equal total divided by 20. 0. And then now I can just print out all my results. So I'm going to say print total and that's just going to be total here then i'm going to say print average and that's going to be average then i'm going to say print lowest and that's just going to be low and finally I'm going to print highest and that's going to be high. All right so these are the problems okay so now let's run this let's see what happens if I get any errors all right, enter values, so it should be. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Excuse nine. me, Professor. Go ahead. Your Go last if statement, you forgot to um, uh, put that it's index i. Did I? Okay. Yeah, you just put list of numbers, so it's gonna it's gonna error. Okay, okay. Give me a sec. Since I'm already, I wanna get to the end. All right. 
This should be the last one. Oh, no, 20, because I started at one. Yeah, there we go. Huh, it worked. So which one did I make a, uh, an error, sorry? Yeah, this one, right? This one. Yeah. Uh, you're right. So, uh, huh. Let's see what, what it did. Lowest is one, which is correct. Total is 210, which I assume is correct. High is this one? Actually, hmm. that's interesting. So let's see. Low. A flow greater than list of numbers. You know, it might just be here that we got lucky. And because of the fact that the order I followed, it just never really, it didn't error out, but I don't think logically that it was doing the right thing because it was comparing, it was, it, it always assigned, no, actually, I think the reason why it didn't air out was that you put everything in order already. Yeah, it was the order, right? It was the order, yeah. Um, that's probably what it was. It never really did anything. They were always greater than one. That's what it was. You see that? Because here I assign one, right? And then every iteration, they were always greater than one. And so, because I was in incrementing, so in, the, in, in, in essence, it just kind of, it only used this and it never assigned that. Does that make sense, guys? So we can, we should probably run this in reverse. So let me do that, or actually in another, just in another way, right? So randomly. It'll stop eventually. That should be the highest. The lowest will be one. There we go. So, yep. The lowest is one. The highest is that big number, 67,889. And then I assume these two are correct. All right. So, looking good. All right. Are there any questions, guys? It sounds like there's no questions. So, in the, in the few minutes I have left, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the homework now, so that way you guys can get started with this. Uh, sometimes you guys want to get started ASAP instead of waiting. So I'm going to do that then. Um, you already know that you have one problem that's assigned. So I'm just going to create. So, so are you guys seeing my, maybe I need to share. So you should be looking at the right space. So now I'm going to go ahead here. You already know the PDF is there. And now I'm just going to create a new assignment. This is going to be arrays homework. It's going to be due on the 22nd. Uh, 11 is what I've been doing. All right, and so basically uh, for the following
equates pseudocode flow chart and Python code. Again, please submit only one report. You can submit your you, Jupyter notebooks, you can submit everything, but I need to see everything in one single report. Sometimes I need to have these things saved up and, and it's, it's easier for me to just have one report. Okay, so I'm going to assign, so for the following, complete the pseudocode flow chart and pseudocode. And then the problems are, they will be programming exercises, Exercises, and I'm going to ask you to do eight, eight, four. Which is the number analysis program. Just finish it. The one we were doing. <laughs> and then I'm going to assign three more. Okay, you can complete 8.2, which is lottery number generator. Okay. Uh, I think we've done that rainfall statistics. I don't know why I feel we've done that one. And then do Do, uh, I like this one, 8.7, 8, 8.7, which is called the phone number lookup. Okay, so do that one. And then, One more. And as a challenge, it's a good challenge here. Um, we will do Okay, we're going to do tic-tac-toe game. So that one will be a good challenge for you. And that's supposed to be 810. Uh, tick tac toe. Okay. All right. Are there any questions? So I'm assigning four problems 8.4, 8.2, 8.7, and 8.10. For all of these, you have to do the pseudocode and the flowchart and the Python code. This video will be uploaded uh, today, later today. It takes a while to process. All right, so I have created this now. And remember the problems are in the Apache PDF. I put the PDFs here and not in the assignments because these assignments sometimes close and then you can't find the, the, the files. So I have to put them outside. All right, uh, that's it for today then. Um, are there any questions?
So homework assignment is posted and you can start working on it. If you have a week, do a week from today. All right. Okay, it seems like there's no questions. So if there's no questions, we're gonna stop here for today and I will see you guys next Tuesday.